Well, good morning, everybody. Um, it's my first time in Korea, so thank you very much for your hospitality. Um, I work for a company called SAP Success Factors, and obviously that's technology for uh, people. It's HR technology, but the difference when we make it now is we're making it for the people. Because the big opportunity for HR and everybody in HR in this room is it's a very exciting time to be in HR. The reason being is although there's so much technology, artificial intelligence and robots, what companies are realizing is that the actual key ingredient to digital transformation and uh, the goals that they set is actually their people. In fact, the more that technology is developing and enhancing, the more companies are recognizing that that one unique difference that actually makes the difference in their organization is actually their people. So rather than me uh, explain that, I've got a short video that I hope for all the people in HR that they take this message and when they go back they understand that this is a big time to change and there's a big challenge for you. Change is faster than we are. Technology changes the jobs we hire for. Trends form like the weather and this is the forecast. Unpredictable with a chance of different. And now for the challenge. Keep up, break free, shatter expectations. The time is now, and we are here to shake things up. Ready? How to start a revolution. One, round up a rock star team of humans. Two, challenge the norm and the status quo. Three, design, think, share, listen, muse, brainstorm. Repeat again and again and again. Cultivate enthusiasm, nurture ideas, define a clear, simple message. Aim high, trust, find truth, truth in diverse perspectives and among partnerships. We are a force. Let's truly change the world, change lives. When we are a megaphone for the unheard, a lighthouse for the unseen, we create exponential change. When we connect people to purpose, they will give you their best. With our leadership, our ripple will become a wave. Our wave will become a movement. Our movement will become a revolution. We are the human revolution. And the human revolution starts now. So look, you can see, it's a really, really exciting time. We have a lot of organizations grasping, not only, you know, that digital is here, digital brings an opportunity to release the potential of people. We're talking about the opportunity to fail, the opportunity to innovate. We heard this morning about big companies don't innovate and small companies is where the innovation is. Well, I can tell you from personal experience, the big companies buy the little innovators and they're buying them for a reason. They're buying them for their people. Okay, so, you know, digital isn't going anywhere. It's certainly always going to be there. In fact, the only real difference is what we have in our homes, we just don't have in our workplaces. And that's really what we all need to concentrate on. We need to bring a seamless transition of technology from how we interact at home, how we might want to do our online banking, to how we book our learning, to how we train. There's an opportunity for everybody in the room to understand that technology isn't going to take your job. It's going to enhance your job. It's really about, you know, not fearing technology, but it's really about what we need in HR is people who are going to take people and enhance their ability to understand technology and not be fearful from it. When you have 40% of administration in your role, that was never meant to be part of your role. There's 40% of your capacity to do the job that you do. If you're in HR, it might have been a HR director or a HR business partner. If you're the head of engineering or head of development, 
you're spending 40% of your time with your head in the sand. And what we need to do is take this opportunity now as people to leverage technology. It's really about connecting your people with the purpose of your organization. It's really about that instant communication and that ability as you as an individual in an organization to truly be able to grasp what is happening in the organization as the pace of change really accelerates and moves faster and faster. The one thing we heard this morning is, you know, change is great as long as it doesn't affect me. Well, change is going to affect every single body in this room, but it's whether you want to look at it as a positive or a negative. And whether you're leading a corporation, what you have to understand is your leadership needs to change and you need to connect your people with the purpose of your business. And HR technology will do that, but it's a small piece of it. It's a really tiny piece. What you really need to concentrate on is three fundamental things in changing the way you operate your business. The first one is the way people are treated. You need to treat people as you expect to be treated yourself and understand that your organizations are going to become more flatter. You're going to have a much more transient talent workforce. And therefore, you need to be able to treat them and understand that even from an intern all the way through to the CEO, there needs to be technology around them to help them to perform at the best of their abilities. How your business is organized. What I mean by that is the structure of your business. Most organizations operate with a top down, a CEO down, a chief innovation officer down. You really need to start to look at how your organization is constructed and you need to look at organizations where it's right to the ends. So you need to tap into those people at the ends of your business who deal with your customers and give them the power to make decisions and run the business for you. The third one is how you make decisions. We heard about it this morning from Netflix. It's about giving people the autonomy and the responsibility to make decisions as if the business are their own. One of the things I notice about HR historically is that we create policies and processes to protect the organization from its people. I think that's fundamentally wrong. And as we move into a digital age, you really need to start to look at giving people uh, the autonomy and the responsibility to run the company and try and go forward. I'm sure there's nobody in this room now that goes to work trying to bring the company down. Well, at least I hope not. Um, give people the chance to excel, to fail, to innovate, and your business will expand. The old way of personnel departments treating people as a, as a, in the P&L as a risk really does need to change. So, at the end of the day, we are all employees. And if we understand our own individual wants and desires, whether that be different generations, millennials, different ideas, you've got to understand that we can communicate to all people all the time. And it's really important that you understand that your people truly are your business. If you're looking for, with SAP, a super bit of software or a super bit of technology, it won't replace a bad process. A piece of technology, if you take an old process and put it on new technology, you still get the same outcome, okay? We really need to concentrate on freeing up our best assets, which is our people. So within that, um, our customers want more control, as you, as you know. They want to be able to order online. You all order online, and you want to be able to decide what you want to watch on Netflix or anything and different like that. Well, you know, our people are no different from that. So we need to create technology systems that enable them to manage their own career, to hire people, to learn things, to pass that information on, to share that with their colleagues. That's the future of HR technology, and that future is right here now. That platforms are there for you to do. But don't make the mistake of thinking that putting in the new technology and applying the old people and the old processes is going to actually make any difference to your business. So, a famous quote from Mr. Jobs was that um, you don't hire smart people to tell them what to do. You hire smart people so they tell you what to do. And that's a really, for me, that's a really inspiring quote in the essence of how to run a productive business. Every single person in this room, whether you're a student, whether you're a CEO, wants to do the best, wants to be given an opportunity to shine. It's really important for us as people, as individuals, if you manage people, or educate people, that you give people the opportunity to be the best that they can. People will learn new skills, people will adapt to do different things. I have spent a bit of time in uh, Japan and with some of our customers there, and I found Nemawashi, 
what I've noticed is that the ability in Japan to really be inclusive of a culture, to bring people along, to get consensus on where the company is going and what that change means to them. Once you understand that, you're able to really drive with your purpose. And that results in higher engagement and higher productivity in an organization. So how do we do that? I do it in our company by the sitting around the dinner table. I don't, I'm sure you all have large families, grandmas, granddads, nephews, nieces, <coughs> babies. When we all sit around the dinner table, we all communicate about different things, different challenges in our business, different challenges at home, you know, learning languages, school grades, all those different things. It's no different now in an organization. We need to remove the structure and the inhibitive top-down organization, and we need to communicate just like we would com communicate around the dinner table, on a regular basis, without any preconceived ideas and politics. Those people around that company dinner table are your business. So it's really important that you value them, just like you value your family and you have conversations with them. Knowledge comes from all of us, from your young uh, child all the way through to uh, the oldest members in your, in your family. It's really important that we don't make the mistake of thinking that technology is driven by young people. Knowledge is going to be the real power, and we're going to hear about how data is a real power. It's all about knowledge and predictive insights. So let's not forget that knowledge can be built over years and experience. So my final point really is about toppling that pyramid. We need to challenge the organizations we're in, and we need to look at the structures that we're around. And I'm asking you to start a revolution. I'm asking you to go back to your workplaces and challenge the way things have been done. Just ask the question, why? Because we need new leaders. We need people who are in the team who are going to help other people through, who are going to encourage people's behaviors, who are going to really start to look across the organization and find the talent and find the new ideas. So what does that mean, really? It means using it today. We all have got mobile phones, and I'm sure you've all looked at it today to check your calendar or do your agenda. Yet the stark contrast I see in organizations is we don't bring that technology into the workplace. So start using it today in your workplace. Start trying it. Start trying all the different tools and things it will do. And as I said, this is about leading the change. And what that needs, it needs a bit of courage. So I'm asking you to take a leap in your organizations. I'm asking you as individuals to take a leap of faith that technology is there as an opportunity. And what you need to do is find that opportunity in it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So I'm from IBM, and uh, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, IBM and uh, where things are with our uh, enterprise. Some of you may know, but uh, it's an old, old company, 107 years old. So it's a technology company, but not a typical image of a, of a tech company. Well, IBM has been changing the past 100 years, and uh, um, we are reinventing ourselves constantly, so uh, it's almost like a change is a BAU, business as usual. And uh, uh, because of that, um, perhaps we are you know, among those people who may embrace change that are to ourselves, but that become a sort of a BAU. And that's kind of how we reinvent ourselves. You hear that uh, uh, IBM are going through a lot of a transformation, <laughs> and that is in, indeed true. One thing that I want to also highlight, though, is our technology focus, research focus, because uh, IBM has been number one in a, a patent uh, leadership uh, in the USA for the uh, past 25 years consecutive. By the way, number two is Samsung. So uh, IBM is still ahead of Samsung, but, uh, um, you know, compared to... Uh, a lot of the um, tech companies, both Samsung and IBM, are well-established companies. So we can still invent. We can, we can do a lot of things with technology. It's just that uh, we have to constantly reshape 
and uh, reinvent ourselves. <clears throat> I represent IBM HR for IBM Asia Pacific, and uh, it's a very diverse geography. So I do want to, uh, to also acknowledge here that uh, um, Jessica this morning, Netflix did mention that uh, uh, Netflix don't have a process. Well, IBM has a process <laughs> because uh, it's very diverse yeah. and uh, uh, it's very complex. And uh, um, without any process, it's going to be a chaos. So we do have a process. But again, process is things that we constantly revisit and reinvent. Because India, IBM has 100,000 people, 100,000. And uh, IBM Korea is uh, 2,000. So compared to the, you know, to, to different market, the way that we, we work through in India are very different from the way that we work through in Korea to be successful. And uh, to be able to uh, keep things as one IBM, which is our important, important agenda, we again try to uh, reinvent what we do constantly. Let me just talk about the uh, um, transition and transformation that we have been driving. <clears throat> you may have heard uh, 10 years ago, maybe 15 years ago, of the global globalization or global standardization in technology. So what was popular back then, and a lot of large companies, including IBM, did, did embrace, was to standardize things as if the world is one size, and we can, we can try to do a one size fit all kind of a mechanization, systematization, and uh, I try to be productive at a global scale. So that's no longer true. Uh, uh, with IBM or with many innovative companies. And uh, we are trying to use technology today to bring two things to the enterprise. One is that uh, um, HR or the people are also part of, the, part of the business. So we are using technology to bring return investment, ROI, to our company. So that's kind of uh, uh, exciting and also very business-focused part of HR. And I think all of you would also feel that um, um, I think uh, Mark said we are no longer a personal department, and we are not. We really are part of the business, and HR and people equal business. And we are all striving toward maximizing return on our investment. That's one side. <clears throat> The other side is to maximize each individual employee experience. And I think this morning there were discussions about that already, how to empower each employee. That the whole point here is to maximize employee empowerment so that each individual can unleash his or her energy to, uh, to make a difference and bring value to the company, to the society. <clears throat> okay. And uh, uh, the, the new culture that uh, we are trying to drive through is to be very transparent, open to feedback, open to failure, and uh, um, people are highly engaged as one team, uh, uh, as part of the enterprise, part of a society. <clears throat> what has moved the needle uh, for IBM? <clears throat> so I'll talk about two things, and I'll continue on this ROI path, return investment, and individual employee experience. <clears throat> and uh, um, let me talk about a few examples here. Um, I put here a few star marks here. Proactive retention, cognitive pay, your learning, Watson career coach. These are examples that I wanted to, uh, to just highlight today to show some of the, some of the things that we, we do using our technology. <clears throat> just a two quote. Technology doesn't only drive efficiency, but it, it fuels collective innovation and analytics is a predictive management tool for driving ROI, business performance. <clears throat> One example, <clears throat> we predict attrition at IBM using IBM research technology extensively, and, and we have been doing that for the uh, uh, past six, seven years. <clears throat> I was in New York six years ago running compensation for IBM, so I was part of this uh, a very big initiative to, uh, to uh, predict attrition. What we do is that uh, we analyze different population across the world, 300,000, 380,000 people that we have. We, we bring them into different clusters, grouping by 
where they are, what they do, what their experiences are, their performance, their pay level, we create cluster of employees. <clears throat> and we identify areas where there is a high propensity to leave, <clears throat> high propensity to leave the organization. <clears throat> and we, after several years, we have become so good in, in, that, in that prediction that uh, um, we also know what actions are needed exactly to be able to retain that cluster of employees with high attrition or high propensity to leave. <clears throat> so where we have become a, 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 a sort of an expert <clears throat> through this technology is that, uh, let's say, um, in India, in this, uh, in this market uh, uh, or site, we have 10,000 employees, of which the attrition rate tends to be 20%. <clears throat> 20%. So we know what levers to pull, particularly with regard to compensation, to make sure that we can bring the 20% back down to 10%, 10%. So what does that do? Of course, it requires investment. So we do invest money to be able to bring the 20% attrition to 10%. At the same time, I talk to my CFO how much saving that could, that could bring to the company. Why is that saving? Because once people leave the company, you have to hire new people to backfill him or her. You have to train that person who came on board with an education cost. There's also a productivity loss in between the people leaving, new people coming. So we can quantify again with the research technology all of that loss of, loss of money that is part of this uh, attrition. <clears throat> so what we have come up with, <clears throat> and this is the kind of where HR leader and CFO shake our hand, is that I tell my CFO, hey, I can save you a lot of money if you give me a lot of money. That's the whole equation. And I use the investment <clears throat> to bring more saving to the business through reduced attrition. And this has been going on for past few years. And the beauty of this is that uh, in the past, HR leader and a finance leader always debated what is the right level of compensation investment. So some of you who are part of HR, HR leadership may, may go through that every year with your CFO. In many instances, technology has solved that because this equation bring win-win to both HR and CFO. That's technology that is very new, but very powerful in terms of bringing HR very close, very close and very well aligned with the whole business. So that is the, the uh, uh, one example, a good example of uh, technology being used to uh, bring maximum business impact to our enterprise. <clears throat> Let me go to the individual side, and it's a bit hard to read, maybe, but um, we have this Watson Career Coach. <clears throat> so Watson Technology, some of you know, is an AI platform of IBM. And what we have been able to do was to install in Watson all the knowledge and the, uh, technology that would help employee, each employee, to guide his or her career, career path, and give them a guidance to uh, what career would be the best suitable one for your next step or next step, next step, what learning you need in order to accomplish your goal, short term, long term. So you can, you can use mobile app to ask questions to Watson, and Watson can give you career guidance through this uh, uh, whole interactive tool. And this is very powerful. Uh, at the same time, Technology doesn't replace, replace people neither. So what, what we do is we run the career conversation campaign between manager and employee simultaneously so that the people use this, this technology to be able to find out what he or she should be doing next for his or her career development. As they also talk to managers and upright managers to get our live guidance and live mentorship in terms of their career. So it's technology and people working together side by side. And that's what we are trying to uh, drive for, to maximize employee experience at IBM. Similar things on the learning front. So 
It's called uh, uh, MICA, which is a learning tool, which is linked to the Watson Career Coach, where through the Watson Career Coach and with your career conversation, you come up with a good idea as to what, as to what would be the right next step for your career, or what would be the right next next step. Both the, the skill set as well as the location, whether you want to be the people leader or the individual contributor, there are many options. But uh, this gets linked into, linked into this, uh, your learning, MICA, where you can choose autonomously which, which learning module to take and which ones are most effective because you know that what is needed from the Watson Career Coach and from your career conversation, and they're going to link up with a, with a MICA tool to be able to provide autonomously the type of education that you feel are important to develop your career. So the revolution here is a company no longer dictate you take this education, you take that training. It's all autonomously done through employee employee exploration through their uh, uh, own initiative to find out what learning skills, what learning modules are suitable to develop his or her skill. And this is a, 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 a culture change because it makes people autonomous and it makes people totally empowered to develop him, himself or herself to be a better leader or a better expert going forward. <clears throat> One more thing I just wanted to highlight is the so-called cognitive talent alert. <laughs> so technology is very, is very effective to be able to remind people what are the, how do you call it, people management uh, 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 sensitivities that uh, you, have to, you have to keep in mind. So when the high performers are doing a, a great job, they hey, it's time to give a recognition for, for employee because you haven't done that for some time to this individual or things like birthday is coming up to one of your employees in two weeks or three weeks. So why don't you start thinking about what, what, what message to write to, to him or her? Or uh, um, your, your, your manager uh, appointment, if you are to uh, appoint manager, what are the necessary soft, soft skills that you need in terms of your communication, your, your, your congratulation, to make sure that uh, um, your, 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 your employee being promoted or being appointed can maximize his or her a, a, a sense of a accomplishment and uh, embrace the, the next adventure. So all these are sort of, a, sort of an alert to remind managers of the next step and guide him or her for effective people management. Now again, I also go back to our earlier notion that these are just tools. And unless managers are very conscious in how to use those effectively, it doesn't really change the culture. So if managers don't have a strong emotion to really celebrate someone's appointment or birthday or compensation increase, it's just a, just a reminder. It doesn't do much. So again, People leadership is people leadership. It doesn't replace those tools. At the same time, those tools are very powerful to help managers and help people be aware of what are the sensitivities that one needs to exert to be effective in people leadership. <clears throat> Lastly, I want to change the subject a little bit here to, to talk about the new color. So IBM right now, across Asia Pacific, and also in the USA, are embracing a so-called new color. And this goes back to uh, Mr. Frederick Reinfeldt's earlier notion that uh, um, people really aren't judged today based on their spe specific academic criteria, academic certificate, or age, or what they have done you know, in the past. Things are much more, much more evolving in terms of what talent are needed in today's era and what, that, what this talent can do to make a change, make a difference in the future. So it's no longer blue color, no longer new color. We particularly in in Singapore, Australia, a few places, including Korea, we are starting to really form a partnership with, a, with, a, with a tech schools to, uh, um, to really develop together the talent out of tech school, and uh, uh, we collaborate in that one-year, two-year program to train them with IBM technology. 
And in Singapore's case, we, we give back half the people to Singapore society while we, while we employ half of them within IBM. So it's a collaboration between the company and Singapore government to uh, jointly develop people who have graduated from a tech school. And this is called the new color. And uh, when we first started early this year, people weren't quite sure, but this is becoming a big hit because people are finding that actually those people are even more flexible and more adapt adaptable to learning than established high degree, high degree students. So that was the example of IBM that I wanted to, to share with you. And back to my earlier starting comment, it's a hundred years company, a hundred years old company that is still trying to uh, reinvent itself every day. And as long as we are part of that reinvention process, I feel or we feel that uh, we can embrace the change that is taking place in the society and can lead the society with the right leadership using the right technology and technology and leadership win-win equation to all of us. Thank you very much for uh, listening. <laughs>
관점 중에 가장 큰 영향을 미칠 것은 뭐냐면 새로운 클래스가 떠오르고 기존 클래스가 떨어질 수 있는 컬랩스 할수 있는 그런 시대가 온다는 겁니다 분명히 4차 산업혁명 시대를 맞게 되면 그 모습은 어떨지 모르지만 분명히 기존에 있던 소셜 클래스가 단 약간 주춤하고 새로운 클래스가 분명히 라이즈 할 거라는 것은 분명해 보입니다 그런 새, 새로 떠오르게 될 라이즈 하게 될 새로운 세대들을 어떤, 어떻게 인사적인 관점과 또 인사적인 어떤 조직적인 체계를 가지고 잘 담아내고 그분들을 더욱 아, 디벨롭 시킬 거냐 하는데 우리가 준비를 해야 될것 같다는 생각을 합니다 그래서 앞에서도 말씀드렸지만 기술 얘기를 계속하고 로봇 AI 얘기를 하지만 역설적이게도 사람이 훨씬 더 중요해지는 시기가 올 거다 그래서 우리는 거기에 준비를 해야 된다는 생각을 하고 있는데 제가 먼저 말씀드리고 싶은 것은 그러면 그런 사람들의 특징이 무언가를 일단 알아야 되거든요 분명 기존 세대와는 다르거든요 그러니까 그렇게 다른 사람들을 기존의 조직의 틀과 기존에 채용하는 툴 기존의 그 사람들을 모티베이션하고 평가하고 보상하는 툴을 가지고는 절대 우리가 그 사람들에게 충분히 포텐셜을 끌어내기는 어렵다는 생각을 하실 겁니다. 그래서 그런 차원에서 이, 이 새로운 어떤 이런 트렌드가 기업에 일단 어떤 영향을 줄 거냐 하는 것들을 좀 찾아볼 필요가 있을 것 같은데요. 분명히 가장 중요한 것은 조직 구조, 조직 구조가 굉장히 달라질 거고 그 안에서 일어나는 여러 가지 커뮤니케이션 프로세스라든가 가장 중요하게는 의사결정을 하는 방법이 굉장히 달라지게 될 겁니다. 그리고 또한 가지는 사람에 대한 부분인데요. 사람들이 아, 특성이 굉장히 달라지기 때문에 그 사람의 특정, 가장 큰 특징은 뭐냐면 이 사람들이 그 쉽게 쉽게 빠르게 적, 그 변화하는 급변하게 변화하는 아, 기술에 또 환경에 빨리빨리 적응할 수 있는 그런 워크프로스를 우리가 채용을 해야 될 거다. 그 다음에 이제 그 안에 조직이 워낙 과거에 우리가 보던 그 조직은 굉장히 일차원적이고 평면적이었지만 앞으로 우리가 지금 당, 그 페이스해야 되는 그런 어, 조직 조직은 굉장히 서비스나 제품도 다양하고 하는 일이 복잡하기 때문에 과거에 있었던 어떤 조직 구조나 커뮤니케이션 가지고는 이 모든 복잡성을 다 아, 단, 감당해낼 수가 없습니다. 그래서 커뮤니케이션 채널이 굉장히 복잡해지고 최근에 테크놀로지를 많이 채용을 해야 되는 부분들이 있을 거고요. 그리고 이제 그런 것들을 뒷받침해주는 테크놀로지컬 아, 인프라스트럭처가 분명히 갖춰져야 됩니다. 아, 전반적으로 인프라가 갖춰진 이후에 전반적인 조, 좋은 조직 문화 안에서 HR 프로그램들이 잘 아, 멀지가 돼 있을 때 우리가 앞으로 그, 그 포텐셜을 끌어내야 되는 인재들을 잘 개발하고 포텐셜을 끌어낼 수 있을 거라고 생각이 됩니다. 그래서 이 사람들이 도대체 어떤 사람들이냐 아까 분명히 다른 종류의 우리 그 후세들이 나오고 있다고 말씀드렸는데 최근에 그런 어떤 밀레니얼들의 특징들을 한번 보면 아 물론 사회별로 약간 다를 수는 있겠지만 전반적인 글로벌 트렌드는 이런 거라고 생각됩니다 일단 굉장히 앙초프로뉴를 합니다 과거처럼 내가 월급 월급 따박따박 받고 안정적인 삶을 지향하기보다는 내가 내 아이디어를 가지고 어떻게 하면 세상이 좀더 기여할 것인가 임팩트를 어떻게 전 세계에 줄 것인가 좀더 살기 좋은 세상으로 만들 것인가 하는 데 관심이 많은 어, 세대인 것이 분명한 것 같습니다 그리고 동시에 여러 가지 일들을 하죠 여러분들 아마 3살, 4살만 돼도 먹어가면서 뭐 아이패드 쓰면서 굉장히 여러 가지 활동들을 하죠 그런 것들이 이제 몸에 DNA에 붙어있는 세대가 될 겁니다 그리고 이 사람들은 항상 24시간 온라인에 들어가 있죠 여러 가지 정보를 습득하는 그 다음에 그런 정보들도 한국에 있는 어떤 정보에 국한된 것이 아니라 국경이 없는 내가 여기 있으면서 아프리카에 어떤 돌아가는 상황이라든가 이런 걸다 파악하고 그런 것들에 또 어, 자극이 되는 그런 사람들의 특징이 분명히 있습니다. 그 다음에 기본적으로 텍세비 하죠. 새로 발달되는 모바일 기술이라든가 인터넷 기술 이런 거에 굉장히 앞서가는 어, 특징들을 보일 수가 있, 보이고 있고요. 그래서 그렇게 열심히 일을 하면서도 동시에 내가 갖고 있는 라이프에 대한 내 삶에 대한 어떤 중요성을 절대 놓치지 않는 특징들도 갖고 있는 것 같습니다. 그래서 워킹 라이프 밸런스라는 게 굉장히 어, 중요한 어, 어떤 그 밸류로 들어와 있는 것 같고 또는 내가 어떤 내 삶에 대한 플렉서리티를 어, 소유하는, 온하는 이런 모습들을 굉장히 중요한 가치로 보고 있습니다. 그리고 이 사람들은 
내가 잘한 행동에 대해서 즉각적인 보상을 해줘야 더 잘하는 모습들을 보입니다 그 다음에 어떤 트랜스페런스 이 사람들은 내가 하는 사업에서 내가 주인이 되고 싶어 하기 때문에 기업 안에서 정보에 대한 어떤 통제를 통한 하이러키를 만든다든가 하는 것들을 견디지 못한 사람들입니다 그 다음에 이 사람들의 특징은 기본적으로 노메리카입니다 한 군데 정체에 있기보다는 지속적으로 옮겨 다니면서 자기의 가치를 어, 만들고 그 가치를 그냥 개인적인 가치뿐만 이 아니라 그런 것들을 통해 가지고 사회의 임팩트를 어, 더 살기 좋은 것을 만드는 데 기여하는 이런 것에 가치를 두는 어, 사람들이 우리가 앞으로 어, 같이 일하게 될 밀레니얼들의 특징이라고 생각을 합니다. 그러면 이런 사람들을 잘더 포텐셜을 끄집어내기 위해서 어떤 것들을 해야 될 거냐 기본적인 HR 밸류체인은 이런 것들이죠. 물론 사회가 아무리 발전돼도 저는 이 기본적인 밸류체인이 바뀔 거라고 생각을 하지 않는데요. 어떻게 하면 현재 우리 조직에서 필요한 인력에서 향후에 1년, 3년, 5년 후의 조직 구조와 어, 인원의 믹스를 어떻게 적절하게 가지고 할 거냐 하는 것들이 가장 중요할 거고요. 그 다음에 사람을 어떻게 채용하고 어떤 기준으로 어떻게 어트랙트 할 거냐 그 다음에 그 사람들이 들어왔을 때 우리 기업에 잘 웰랜딩하기 위해서 언보딩을 어떻게 할 거냐 또 기술적인 부분을 어떻게 계속 리더십을 어떻게 계속 디벨롭 시켜줄 거냐 그 다음에 그렇게 해서 일할 준비가 됐다면 일을 잘했는지 그렇지 않은지를 어떻게 평가할 거냐 더 잘한 사람들에게 대해서 조금 더 좋은 보상과 모티베이션을 해주고 그게 이제 컴펜세이션 부분이 되겠죠 그 다음에 충분히 기여를 하면 자기 길로 갈수 있도록 또 엑시트를 도와주는 그런 것이 가장 기본적인 밸류체인이 될 거고 조금 더 조직이 복잡해지면 그 안에 있는 HR 애널리틱스라든가 인플로이 리거리라든가 커리어 투비 이런 것들이 더 중요한 요소가 되겠죠. 저는 위에 있는 기본적인 것들은 우리가 잘 해왔고 앞으로도 잘할 거라고 믿고요. 그 다음에 앞으로 우리가 이, 이런 어떤 새로운 세대들을 좀더잘 파악하고 이끌어가기 위해서는 HR 애널리틱스라는 부분이 점점 점점 더 중요해지라고, 중요해지라고 생각됩니다. 그런 것들을 통해서 이 사람들이 그때그때 그때 각각의 위에 있는 단계별로 워크플로스 플래닝부터 리크루팅, 온보딩, 퍼포먼스 매니지먼트, 컴펜세이션 이 모든 단계별로 보여주는 특징들을 잘 파악을 해서 거기에 우리 문화나 HR 프로세스에 즉각적으로 반영해주는 그런 판단들을 해야 되는 거죠. 근데 가장 안타까운 부분들은 과거에 우리가 이런 어떤 데이터적인 시각을, 시각을 가, 갖거나 또는 그 데이터를 생산해 내거나 그런 것을 담아내는 구조가 굉장히 부족했다는 게 가장 제가 보기에는 안타까운 그런 어, 상황이라고 생각이 됩니다. 그래서 이런 것들 시각에 대해서 우리가 앞으로 아, 다가오는 밀레니얼들의 우리가 준비가 돼 있는 거냐 하는 것들을 볼 필요가 있을 것 같아요. 몇 가지 포인트를 좀 말씀을 드리려고 합니다. 첫 번째는 데이, 앞에서도 계속 말씀드린 것처럼 데이터입니다. 데이터가 앞으로는 가장 중요한 뉴 커런스와 같은 그런 역할을 하게 될것 같은데 이런 포인트들이 있는 거죠. 과거에 제가 30년 전에 입사할 때도 이런 지원서를 썼고 그렇지만 지금은 대부분 회사가 외부로 지원서를 받고 하지만 그 안에 있는 방법은 바뀌었지만 그 안에 있는 실제 컨텐츠나 내용들은 크게 달라진 게 없습니다. 그 정도 수준의 데이터가 우리한테 쌓이고 그 이후에 아까 얘기했던 그 밸류체인 단계상에서 나오는 모든 데이터들이 우리한테 의미 있게 들어와야 되는데 거기에 대한 데이터들은 실제 나오지를 않습니다. 그래서 우리가 지금 얘기하는 그 데이터들은 1년에 한 번, 연말 평가 때한 번, 또는 채용할 때한번 컬렉트하는 그런 데이터를 얘기하는 것이 아니라 인플로이들이 우리 직원들이, 우리 구성원들이 겪게 되는 전체적인 라이프 사이클에 대해서 모든 데이터가 나올 수 있도록 만들어주고 그 사람들이 충분히 회사를 믿고 데이터를 제공할 수 있는 그런 환경을 만들어주는 게 굉장히 중요하다고 생각됩니다. 그 다음에 이 사람들이 원하는 그 기본적인 이런 플로우는 소셜 네트워크와 비슷합니다. 그래서 앞으로 얘기하는 뭐 섹터 섹스 팩터라는 여러 가지 그런 그 HR 데이터베이스를 보시더라도 굉장히 소셜 네트워크와 유사한 페이스북과 유사한 또는 링크인과 유사한 기반으로 되어 있습니다. 그래서 그런 어떤 네트워크를 통해서 자연스럽게 데이터들이 나오는 이런 방향으로 진행되고 있다고 생각이 됩니다. 그래서 또한 가지 그럼 데이터가 일단 그렇게 나온다고 하더라도 더 중요한 포인트들은 우리 조직 내에 이런 데이터들을 유효하게 담아낼 수 있는 그릇이 있는 거냐 
그게 이제 데이터 스트럭처 부분이 되겠죠. 근데 그게 되기 위해서 기본적으로 스탠다디제이션 표준화 단계까지도 못간 기업들이 굉장히 많습니다. 근데 그 단계가 충분히 되지 않으면 그 다음 단계, 커그니티브 단계로 가기가 굉장히 어려운 거죠. 그래서 진짜 우리가 4차 산업 혁명 시대를 얘기를 하지만 현재 우리가 어떤 땅을 딛고 있느냐 하는 것들을 충분히 보실 필요가 있고요. 그 다음에 이제 세 번째가 지금 가장 말씀드리고 싶었던 게이 부분입니다. 조직 구조 부분인데요. 앞에서 얘기한 것과 조금 다른 차원으로 볼 수가 있겠지만 아, 조직 구조라는 것은 단순히 조직도 우리가 얘기하는 박스와 라인을 구성된 조직도만을 얘기하는 것이 아닙니다. 조직 안에 있는 전략과 프로세스와 사람의 문제와 리워드 이 모든 것들을 다 얘기를 하는 것들인데 이것들에 대한 고민이 별로 없습니다. 낙하산을 위에서 아래로 내려오게 돼 있는데 사람들에게 야너왜안 올라가니? 근데 그렇게 만들어진 게 아닌 거거든요. 근데 그렇게 만들어졌다는 걸 모르는 상태에서 그런 식으로 일을 하기를 기대하는 것은 어불성설인 거죠. 그래서 제가 당부드리고 싶은 말씀은 요한 장이 담았습니다. 그래서 아, 혹시 들어보신 분이 계신지 모르겠지만 우리가 얘기하는 어떤 기술의 집약, 집약체라고 할수 있는 스페이스 셔틀, 발라드 가고 뭐 화성도 가고 하죠. 근데 이런 어떤 스페이스 셔틀의 사이즈를 누가 결정했느냐? 역설적이게도 2000년 이상 전에 로마인들이 결정을 했다는 거죠. 이 스페이스 셔틀이 그 발사를 하는 케이 캐네벨까지 가려면 터널을 통과해야 되는데 터널을 통과하려면 그보다 더 크면 안 되겠죠. 그래서 그 사이즈가 터널에 크게 맞춰져 있는데 그러다 보니까 터널은 레일로드, 철로의 두 개를 합친 정도 사이즈밖에 안 되겠죠. 그러면 이 철로의 사이즈는 누가 결정했느냐? 2000년 전 넘은 로마인들의 저 마차 크기에서 나왔다는 거죠. 제가 드리고 싶은 말씀은 우리가 4차 산업혁명 시대를 걱정하는 것도 중요하지만 우리가 지금 만들고 있는 인사의 철학, 제도, 프로세스, 조직 구조 이 모든 것들이 우리가 앞으로 아, 개발해야 되고 도와줘야 될 밀레니얼들, 우리 후세 또는 백년, 이천년 후에 우리 후세들에게도 충분히 직접적인 영향을 미칠 수 있을 거기 때문에 우리가 지금 너무 큰 불안을 가, 갖기보다는 차근차근히 현재를 돌아보고 준비하는 그런 인사 프로페셔널들이 됐으면 하는 바람에서 오늘 발표 마치도록 하겠습니다. 고맙습니다. Today we are talking about HR issues facing the companies and employees working in those companies under this uh, severe uh, technological changes. My first question is to Seth, success factors. I understand you are a consulting firm helping uh, corporations uh, meeting the cha challenges uh, in this uh, digital era. Um, since you did a very good advertisement today, commercial, um, <laughs> what, what, Thank you. what can you do for, say, Korean startup companies and mid-sized manufacturing companies and mid-sized or large-sized tech companies like uh, Kakao? What, can you, what kind of services can you provide for them? I think it's a, good, it's a really good question, and I think that's the difference nowadays. Uh, if people are the heart of your business, certainly in a startup, that's where the ideas are from, critical talent. If you're in a big business like a manufacturing business and moving into smart manufacturing business, again, critical to your talent. So what we're able to do is we're able to provide a level playing field. And we're able to provide uh, the insights of that talent, how it wants to work, how it's best performing, etc. And that doesn't matter whether an organization is two years old with 20 people or 100 years old with 200,000 people. The, the principles that we've heard today are, are exactly the same. So th that, that's fundamentally what we provide. We provide that common platform and the insights. What we don't do is we don't provide the strategy and the leadership. It's technology at the end of the day. That's what it is. It'll do what you tell it to do. What we need is people to change their attitudes towards uh, the way that they deal with people and look at it as an asset and trust that asset to do the best for their business. And we help them do that. Okay. Um, taking the one question from the floor, um, how 
actively is Watson used? Can can employees always access yes. Watson Career Coach? Um, do people like it, or is it an obligation to use it? Do people like it? Is is it beneficial to the employees? In the real world, how does it work? Yeah. So. Um, there is no obligation, nothing is mandatory. It's just that uh, it, it's a tool that would help employee guide their career and also link that career aspiration to the learning. So it is a very useful tool and it is being used um, across, the, across the world. Um, the Watson technology itself is being, you know, it, 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 it's evolving uh, uh, every, every day, every week. So they are new, you know, new technology that get, it, get put into uh, to Watson to have it more updated. So it, it, is a, it is a living, growing machine, just like any human being. And to the extent where one can utilize it effectively, it, it will be very helpful. However, as I have mentioned, it doesn't replace human being. So what we encourage is to have the career conversation with your manager, have, the, have a career a uh, 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 dialogue with your mentor, so that the, the real um, live conversations in terms of what's important for you and for your future get uh, uh, positioned correctly as you receive AI help uh, from Watson. So two are side by side and one complement and both complement each other, but uh, Watson wouldn't replace real dialogue that uh, you, you want to have with your manager. And that's going to be the source of your aspiration to uh, how you want to shape your own future. Uh, 한국말로 이제 여쭙겠습니다. Uh, Netflix 보상 체계는 인센티브가 없는 구조라고 얘기를 했는데 에, 카카오는 어떤 보상 체계를 가지고 있고 어떻게 직원들한테 에, 동기 부여를 하시는지요? 네, 일단 아, 비교를 한다고 하면 Netflix 같은 게 제가 이야기하는. 총 보상을 전부 캐시라는 현금을 해서 이거를 기본급과 보상 그 보너스를 나누지 않고 전체 보상을 해서 그 사람의 기여도를 평가하고 모티베이션 하는 걸로 알고 있고요. 아, 반면에 카카오는 약간은 그쪽보다는 전통적인 방식에 가깝습니다. 그래서 기본급과 보너스와 일부 아, 스탁 옵션을 유지하는 그런 형태로 되어 있고요. 그래서 가능하면 어 그 개인들의 어떤 그 성과에 대한 부분도 아, 반영을 하지만 각각의 조직별로 어떤 기여한 전, 전체 조직에 기여한 것을 고려해서 아, 전체 풀을 결정을 하고 그 안에서 개인들의 아, 성과 결과에 따라서 아, 사, 그, 기, 그 기본급의 인상과 또 보너스를 결정한 그런 구조로 되어 있고요. 일부 어, 핵심 인재, 인재들에게서는 스탁 옵션도 운영을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 결론적으로 말씀드리면 뭐 넷플릭스 같은 그런 어떤 새로운 방식까지 아직 가지는 못했던 것 같고요. 아직까지는 전통적인 방식에서 조금 더 IT 기업의 특성을 어, 살린 그런 어, 보상 체계를 갖고 있다고 말씀드리겠습니다. 예, 어, 답변 어, 감사드리고요. 발표해 주신 세 분들 큰 박수로 오늘 세션 마치도록 하겠습니다. 감사합니다.